So when people are missing their pets, there's something that happens with some of these people, and I was one of them, where they don't actually move through their grief. Today I'm gonna to talk about my personal technique that I used myself and that now I teach to help people move through the grief they feel over losing a pet. Danielle McKinnon. I am an animal communicator. That means I psychically connect with animals and uh, they can be alive, they can be crossed over. So I have a lot to say about this and the animals have had a chance to teach me a lot about um, when they cross over and, and what that's all about. And so today I'm going to share a particular aspect of that with you. All right, so in addition to helping you with your grief, the technique that I'm going to teach in a little bit has another like immensely cool benefit but you got to stay tuned because i'm not going to tell you till the very end okay um this was like 20 years ago one of my dogs we had to put her down and it was really a like a completely devastating uh experience for me and for my husband we i just felt terrible it, but because the grief was so big Every time I thought about this dog, I cried. And that went on for one month, two months, three months, one year, two years, three, and, and, and it kept, what was happening with me was that the grief was not getting easier. My feelings around it, my guilt around it, my upset, my missing her, none of it was abating. Meaning, uh, if I were to talk to somebody about m this dog who'd crossed over, and it's three years later, my grief was as big as it was two weeks after she passed. Now, if you're somebody who, when you talk about the animal that crossed over, you still feel that immense grief, what I'm going to teach you is um, going to help. And it helped me a lot, and I know it's helped a lot of my clients as well and a lot of my students. Um, but I need to explain, I think, why this happens. So why do so many of us still so deeply grieve for the animals that have crossed over, where often a family member, a human family member that's crossed over, the, um, the grief, we move through the grief a little bit better. I know this sounds crazy what I'm saying, but if you're one of these people who's having this experience where it's two years, three years, five years, 10 years later, and it still feels like the, the, the pain and the grief is still as big as it was in the beginning, um, then you know what I'm talking about. Now, one of the reasons that I think that so many of us who love animals end up in this kind of like uh, frozen state of grief is because people don't understand. So often they understand my father died, my, my sister died, my grandparent died, my friend died, and, and people give allowance for that. People understand other people dying, but when it's an animal, so many people don't understand that grieving process. So many people don't understand that we can hurt when an animal, a beloved animal dies just as much as if it were a human. So when my dog crossed over, my grief was really, really huge. I was learning animal communication. I actually had an animal communication business, but my grief around this dog passing remained for several years. Finally, I decided, <laughs> why it took me so long, I don't know. I, said, I decided I was gonna ask her about this. Why does it still hurt so much? It was three years in. And why do I still miss her? Why do I still feel so bad? What's going on? And um, this, what she told me was that she'd been concerned about her passing for me, for my well-being. Not she was concerned about her passing for her. She wasn't gonna miss, it wasn't like um, I'm scared to cross over. It wasn't like I don't want to. What she said was she was concerned about how I was gonna handle it and what I needed to do with it and how I needed to kind of assimilate and work with her passing. So here's what she did. She told me that she was actually with me all the time. And by with me, you know, I had to get clarification on that. What does with me mean? Because, you know, you, you hear about animals have crossed over. They come and visit. They know what you're doing. They can give messages, that kind of thing. She, this is not what she meant. What she was talking about was that she had actually suction cupped to me. 
she had energetically, and, and this is kind of cool, because she was a lap dog, she had energetically, her energy, you can't see, but her energy was right here, kind of in my lap, in my, in my abdomen area. That's where she had settled. And she had settled there because she wanted to make her crossing over easier for me to handle. Now, let me explain what this means. When somebody, when an animal crosses over, they cross over, they go through the veil, they go and they go off and they do spirit school, animal spirit school, I don't know what it's called, they go and do that stuff. And then, you know, within a week or two, they kind of are back and they can visit and they can, you know, they're, they're like a spirit, they can give messages, you know, this is the kind of the thing that everybody loves and, and wants. What this dog did is instead of going to spirit school, she said she crossed over, went through the veil, you know, but instead of going to school, she came and she was with me. She brought her energy to be with me. So she was basically suction cupped to me. And her thought in doing this was, I'm gonna stay with Danielle because it will be easier for her to adjust to all the changes that are coming about with me being crossed over. Now this is great and there's lots of animals that do this, but because of what the situation that I was in, because of my guilt that I had around her passing, because of my own personal circumstances, I never came to a natural place where she and I separated energetically so she could go off to spirit school and then become kind of a normal, regular um, animal on the other side. It was her kindness that put us in this situation, but then it was my emotions and my reaction to it that held her in that situation. Which is why when I connect with someone whose animal has done this for them, it will feel like that animal is totally present and, it will fe and the grief remains kind of in the beginning stages of grief unless that person kind of moves through this. And I hadn't moved through this. So I wanna show you and uh, teach you how to deal with this if you're experiencing this. This is not the end of the world. This is not a horrible thing. It's a wonderful thing that the animals are doing um, when they choose to do this. We, as humans, grieving and loving animals, have a responsibility though to rebalance the relationship so that um, that can be a healthy energetic relationship with the animal on the other side. So this is all you have to do. So what I did is I, I imagined her here. So wherever, if you're one of these people who's experiencing this, it may be, let's say you had a dog that was always at your, at your side, the dog's probably there. A rabbit that you always carried here, the, ra the rabbit's probably here. Whatever it is, um, figure out where you think the animal's energy is hanging out, being with you. And then the goal is to create separation between these two energies, physical separation, so that you can um, actually have balance and healthy boundaries back in this relationship. So what I did is I asked her, well, what do I do? And she said, why don't you, and she, she taught me how to do this and then I taught a whole bunch of, I teach it all the time. Um, she said, what, just ask my energy, thank, send me gratitude, and then ask my energy to separate from yours about a half an inch. So I closed my eyes and I did that. And, and I, I imagined that I'm doing it up here so you can see, but I imagined the two energies just separating just a little bit. And it was actually really not easy because I was worried and I felt like I was rejecting her and I wasn't being grateful for her and I was going to lose her. I'm an animal communicator. I know I'm not, but my fear, my worry was. So she said, just continue going until there's two feet of space between us. And when there was two feet of space between us, um, she was free. And it doesn't mean she left me. What it meant is that she could come and go, that she could visit. She was just more free to do all the stuff that, is, that, a, that an animal on the other side needs to do instead of focusing all of that on me. 
This is not a technique that you use to get through normal grief. You, we have to grieve. This is a normal part of, of being alive. But this is a technique to use when you're in a place of extreme grief and it's not moving and it's been a long time. You can try out, do I think maybe the animal's right here or somewhere with me? Would this animal have done that for me? And then you can try moving half inch by inch by inch. Now, the first few inches are a little more challenging because it feels scary, you're shifting the relationship, but when you get to about three, four, five inches, six inches, somewhere in there, it starts to get a little bit easier. And the coolest thing about this, <laughs> I can't believe I took till now to say it, the coolest thing about this is that um, when the animal is not suction cupped to you like this, the animal is free to send you messages from the other side. So yay. So it opens up the grief and, and allows you to move through the grief, but it also opens up messages and opens up the relationship and sets things up so you can do things in a new way.